Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. This is the 2022 Tour de France preview. Now we're starting to get more teams listing out their eight rider roster for this year's Tour de France. Israel Premier Tech, when they listed theirs, you look at this roster, it looks solid because they have Tour Suisse rider third on the general classification just a couple days ago, Fogelsang. Fogelsang's in solid position here to do something in the top 10 on the general classification. When you look at a team like Israel Premier Tech, and now you look at a team like FDJ, who just listed out their eight rider roster, you gotta understand that this starts to get a little complicated at the Tour de France for teams like Israel Premier Tech and FDJ. Now, when you're talking about a sprint team like Lada Sudol, they got a solid lineup here to win the sprints with Caleb Ewan, right? It becomes super clear when you're talking about a team like Lotto or a team like Quickstep who hasn't released their roster yet to my knowledge when they have a sprinter, Fabio Jakobsen. When you're talking about Lotto and Fabio Jakobsen from Quickstep, it's clear with these two teams. They want to win stages one, two, three, and any flat stage that comes after the cobblestones on stage five here at the Tour de France. So when you're looking at these teams, you got to think about how complex it is. Lotto and Quick Step, like I said, it's easy peasy. They want field sprints. These first two stages up in Denmark, talking about stage two and three, those are difficult, complicated stages. And there's nobody in the professional peloton that's gonna feel at ease on stages two and three. The first stage with an individual time trial, that starts looking a little bit more clear for certain riders. When you're talking about FDJ and you look at their team, they got a solid roster there. Of course, with Stefan Kuhn that has a shot at winning stage one, but he's going to have to be Wild Van Aert, Tade Pogacar, Primoz Roglic, and a host of other fast individual time trial specialists at this year's 2022 Tour de France. But when you look further down, when you start taking FDJ, and once you pull out that stage one victory, possible victory there, Stefan Kuhn winning. After that, things get a little more complicated for FDJ because with Thibaut Pinot on that team, remember in 2019, I believe he was the absolute outright big favorite to win that year's Tour de France. And then he had the knee injury just above the knee injury on his thigh that he bruised and that took him out of that year's Tour de France. And since then, we haven't seen a whole lot from the French rider, but we did see him win a stage at Tour of Suisse. So, FDJ with Thibaut Pino, they have a big question mark over their team right now because they have Michael Storr, who won two stages at the Vuelta last year, so they could easily be hunting stages. And, of course, they have Godou, who's on fantastic form, but then faded a little bit at Dauphiné. He went solid when he beat Wild Van Art, and then on that last stage, he fell apart. And so now you got little question marks over him. So what will FDJ do during this first week? They're going to focus on that stage one time trial, of course, with Stefan Kuhn, but that won't upset the chemistry with the team thereafter. Now what you got to ask yourself is what will they do during these dangerous first stage two all the way to stage five of the cobblestones until things start to calm a little bit. Normally with FDJ, if they go all in for Thibaut Pino, which we've seen in the past, but like I said, he hasn't been riding good since that 2019 Tour de France until Tour of Swiss. So when he won that stage at Tour of Swiss, it makes things a bit more complicated. And what now the most interesting thing about FDJ after stage one time trial is whether or not if they're going to spend a ton of energy looking after Thibaut Pino, hoping that his form may have come up even just a little bit more. Because Tour of Swiss, when he won that stage, he was suffering a lot to win that stage and he won from the breakaway. But I'm here to tell you right here on the Beyond the Coverage, if Thibaut Pinot's form can make just one little jump, he could all of a sudden be at that 2019 Tour de France form here for 2022. Now, I'm not saying he can compete with the two Slovenians, but could he run a podium at the Tour de France if his form gets a little bit better? Absolutely. So Mark Matteo, their main director, sportif, and manager there at FDJ, he's got a lot to look after on this first week at the Tour de France. And then he has to decide whether or not if he can race for general classification with either, either David Godou or Thibaut Pino, or does he start hunting stages? Because every team out here, they're going to want to either be top 10 on the general classification, more like top five. My perspective normally is if you get a rider in the top 10, you can be pretty happy if you're one of the smaller teams. But if you could get a stage win, that starts getting a little bit even there because a win is always worth a lot to the sponsors. But if you're top five, that's worth a whole lot. In my book, I'm taking top 10 over a stage victory, but a lot of times the sponsors would prefer a stage victory over a top 10. 
So when you're looking at the two teams that just announced the roster, Israel Premier Tech and FDJ, remember these two teams got a lot of dilemma here because even Israel Premier Tech with Fogel saying, with his fine form at Tour of Suisse, and let me remind you that Michael Woods went really well in France too to win himself an overall week victory here before the Tour de France starts. So with those two riders, they have options just like FDJ to either run for GC or to start hunting for stages, and Israel Premier Tech have Daryl Empey on the team. So anytime the group gets down to about 40 riders in size, Daryl Empey has to be a threat to be able to win the stage after we saw his fine form and stage win at Tour of Suisse. But remember, there's Walt Van Art here. And Walt Van Art wasn't at Tour of Suisse, and was, neither was Matthew Vanderpool, who clearly should be faster than, than the South African rider Daryl Empey when it comes to these smaller groups. So when you look at these teams, keep in mind there's a lot of dilemma going on for the directors in the car when they're trying all the complicated math, trying to figure out, do we send riders up the road? Can Thibaut Pino ride for GC? Because if we have that magical form from 2019 and he can get through this first week of racing, all of a sudden FDJ could be in the hunt for a top five general classification here at Tour of, Tour de France 2022. And remember, let's say the two Slovenians, Tade Pogaccia and Primoz Roglic, crash and lose massive time in these first five crazy stages here at the Tour de France. Now all of a sudden Thibaut Pino, if he came with that 2019 form, he could be one of the first Frenchmen to be able to win the Tour de France. Seems like a long shot, right? So, but it's really not. When you look back at 2019, it's easy to see that that level could have come up after his Tour de, Tour of Swiss stage win here just a few days ago. Now, keep in mind when I'm giving you my perspective here, because a lot of times when the directors are getting interviewed, they may or may not be telling you the whole truth, and they might be trying to sidetrack the question altogether. So I'm trying to give you a view of what I've experienced at the Tour de France. And my view here at the Tour de France has gone from being with the smallest teams with some, like Sonia Deval Perdure, who we were just happy to get in the Tour de France, and then it was easy. You get in the break, you try to win a stage. We didn't have any hope for general classification. I've gone with other teams like Radio Shack when it was Fabian Cancelar, who was fighting for the first stage individual time trial victory and won it, and then we were in yellow ha having to defend the jersey. Now, other years when I rode for Radio Shack, we had a solid squad there, much like a team like Bahrain Victorious had, where you could run high on the general classification, but they still wanted to win an individual stage and then still had us fighting for the team classification. So when you're listening to the butterfly effect or beyond the coverage, keep in mind I'm giving you a perspective from different views that I've experienced throughout the Tour de France, but I've seen them all from the highs and the lows, even at points in times when I was racing with Radio Shack and we went into the Tour de France that year with, with Lance Armstrong wanting to win the overall classification. So I've seen the stress from many different angles as the team management would see the stress fighting for stages, fighting for general classification, fighting for team classification. And I've been to the Tour de France where I was the last rider selected to make the Tour de France squad just days before the Tour de France had started. And then I've gone there when I was with Lampre where I was actually on the emergency room table six weeks before the Tour de France started, climbed off the table, called the team, told them I just got off the emergency room table after they put a hose down into my lung to inflate my lung after it had gotten punctured. And they told me at that point in time, six weeks to go before the Tour de France, that Chris, if you want to go to the Tour de France, you're in it, no problem. Just let us know and give us the knot. So keep it in mind when you're listening to the directors on the road, when you listen to writers doing interviews, they never want to talk about something negative about their sponsors or about their teammates or of course about their writers and their managers and directors in the car because those are the guys that possibly hired them on the team. When you're looking here at the butterfly effect and beyond the coverage, I'm trying to give you guys the view of what the rider would experience and what managers would experience throughout their time here at the Tour de France. Hope you guys can appreciate the view here on beyond the coverage and the butterfly effect, and I'll see you guys on the next edition when more teams start to list their eight riders set up for this year's 2022 Tour de France. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition.